cycling was something that I started when I was a young kid. I actually, I still remember the first day I got off of training wheels. Um, and then as life continued, it became sort of all-encompassing in my life. Without it, life would be somewhat incomplete, in my opinion. July 11, 2001, as I tell people, that was the last bad day I've had in my whole life ever since. So I was at a meeting. It was a normal company meeting, one of those meetings you go to. It's week long, Monday through Friday. And we happened to go to New Mexico. And we had a half day to do something else. So a lot of guys were going to play golf. Some people were going to go shopping. I brought my buddy's travel bike out. And I was going to hopefully get a couple miles in before the meetings began. It was about 5.30 in the morning. The sun was coming up over the mountains. And we were out in the middle of nowhere, and I decided to just do laps around the hotel property. It was a way to get out, start the day, get a little blood flow in, get the heart racing. And on the fourth lap, I came around the bend. What I saw coming at me was a Ford Explorer in my lane, heading right for me. It was surreal, and I tried my hardest to avoid it, but I was going about 20 miles an hour. He was going about 40 miles an hour, and I just didn't have enough time to react. And he hit me head on. I hit the front grill, flipped over, and went right through his windshield. And I remember everything. I remember the screech of his brakes. I remember the sound of me hitting his car and the sound of me falling off his car onto the asphalt. And then I remember just lying there in the desert thinking, is this how it feels to die? because I knew I was badly hurt. Like I couldn't move. If I did move, I was in a lot of pain. And the EMTs came and they started to do their thing and they told me we're gonna to have to get a helicopter to medevac you to the University of New Mexico at Albuquerque because the 45 minute ambulance ride was gonna be far too long and they didn't think I was gonna make it. I was in the ICU for the next five days. I came out of the ICU in the middle of the night and my right leg was in traction. My left leg was all bandaged up. I knew I had a long, long, long road in front of me. And it was more about months or years to get fully back and not a matter of days or weeks. The extent of my injuries were pretty extreme. So the accident, the left femur really took the brunt of the impact. And so that left femur shattered, it was a compound fracture. So bone sticking out of skin, and the, the bone shattering lacerated the femoral artery. The right leg also took a lot of the impact, right, because we're right there at the grill of a Ford Explorer on a bike. So my right femur broke on my right leg. My right tibia broke. My right shoulder broke because that when I flipped up and went into the car's windshield, the right shoulder went into the windshield. I had glass, windshield glass from my ear to my mouth. So and then I had just other injuries related to the, the accident. So the cutting of the fasciotomy, so that was like open wounds that needed to be closed because the leg needs you know, the time to swell or room to swell, because I needed about 36 units of blood product over the first 36 hours. So I had lost a lot of blood. My helmet was sort of shattered. Um, the helmet saved my life. There were a lot of things that saved my life, my life that day. The helmet was one. The helmet did exactly what it needed to do. It kept my brain intact, right? Had I hit the car with that force, without a helmet, I either would have been dead or had such a significant brain trauma, I would be significantly compromised the rest of my life. The accident was profound just on my emotional and spiritual state. You know, leading up to it, we had two daughters. I had a busy career. It was a stressful career, uh, but I thought that was just a normal part of life, right? You work a job, there's stress, and then I got hit and I got hurt, and I was like, this is great, right? Um, and it made me angry, right? I didn't think it was fair. The guy should not have been driving. He had a revoked license, and that put me in a real funk, right? I, I felt wrong. I thought life was not fair. In a lot of ways, life is not fair. Uh, but how you react to life is important. But in that, during that time, how I was reacting to it was 
frustration, anger. I was sometimes revengeful. I wanted to get him. I wanted to get back. I wanted, you know, you hurt me, I'm gonna hurt you. Those emotions don't help you move forward. But I was stuck there for a while. But in a lot of ways, the only person that could make it better was me and my mindset and my belief system. I had to change it for myself. The switch got flipped when I was at the Kessler, Kessler Institute for Rehabilitation. As I went into Kessler, I was no longer the worst off, right? In New Mexico, at Hackensack, in the orthopedic wing of the hospital, I was the most badly hurt. You know, most of the other patients had come in for an ACL repair, maybe a meniscus change, maybe a knee replacement, but I was always the worst off. And then when I went to Kessler, I wasn't. Everything has relativ relativity, right? Everything has perspective. And I realized that my situation could have been a lot worse. So that was the first moment. But then there was a moment when I was in rehab, I was doing my morning workout, and I had a moment where I just looked around the room, I scanned the room, and I saw all the different patients that were there working with their therapists. And some were making progress and others were not. And I began to wonder, what's driving their progress when others didn't see any progress? And I realized it was their mindset. Did they believe? Did they believe that they could get better? Did they wake up with that type of attitude? What blocks did they have in their mind? And the people that were making progress had fewer mindset or limiting beliefs. And I knew then in a moment that I had to change my belief system in order to get better, in order to get to my full potential. And I realized that if I had limiting beliefs, I had a choice as to whether or not I wanted to listen to that. That realization that I didn't have to listen to those limiting beliefs or those mindset blocks that would limit my potential, that I could actually change or pick a different direction, have a different choice to propel me forward, I took that principle back into work. Part of the journey has been understanding what happens when you have a near-death experience. You know, do you sell everything and go to Nepal and backpack around the world, right? Do you, you know, free yourself of all of your material possessions? Like, what do you do? And I was like, well, I don't know if that's possible. I'm a father of two girls. We have a life in suburban New Jersey. I have a career. What, what do you do with your life? And I had some of those moments, like what, what would truly make me happy? What's my definition of success? And I was still having a ball doing what I was doing at my company. Yes, there was stress, but I knew that one day I wanted, wanted to do something on my own, but I never had the courage to do it. So what transpired was, you know, it took about 13 years that the company was going through another change and that change was gonna impact me. And when I, what I knew about myself is that I had a choice in how I wanted to respond to that change. So it took 13 years, but it was, it was that buildup that gave me the courage to finally make that big leap. A leap away from the comforts of corporate America, maybe the comforts of good enough that hold you in a corporate job for as long as it does, into a world of exploration. The accident was significant. And it made me realize that life is precious. And again, life is a series of choices. So I get to wake up every day and decide how fully engaged in life I'm gonna be. And I made a determination that I was gonna to try to maximize every day. And that's what I try to do with my clients now with Peloton, is help them make progress each and every day, between each and every session. Are we moving it forward? You closer to your overall goal of happiness and success tomorrow? And then tomorrow comes and we do it again. And we keep on doing it again. Because life is a journey, right? It doesn't stop. We don't settle, we keep on moving.